welcome to St. Augustine's Church, Skeynes Hill, for this service of Holy Communion. Whether you're watching with others or on your own, you're all very welcome. Today is traditionally Bible Sunday, when we give thanks for the rich heritage we have in the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And all our hymns today have been chosen because they are based on Bible passages. And so we begin with the first of those hymns, Thou Whose Almighty Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We keep a moment of quiet to remember our failings. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. 
。阿门。Collect for Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, beginning to read at the first verse. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So, on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gates in the presence of the men, women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. 
for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. The New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Glory to you, O Lord. The Greatest Commandment Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Sustainer and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Each one of our readings today for Bible Sunday emphasises the importance of the written word. That passage from Nehemiah is amazing. The Israelites had been in exile in Babylon for about 50 years. On their return, they found the city of Jerusalem and the surrounding towns were in ruins. A big construction programme began. And what was also being constructed at the same time was a community. Communities need guidelines and the reading of the law was a key moment. Did you notice how emotional the people were when the law was read to them? They assembled with one accord in the square and listened attentively to the reading from daybreak to noon. Their attitude and enthusiasm were impressive. Ezra, their teacher, stood on a high wooden platform built specially for the occasion. The men and women and all who were able to understand stood below the platform and wept while the law was read and explained to them. We catch a real feeling for the significance of the occasion. And in our Gospel reading, Jesus was questioned by the Pharisees on his attitude to the law. Which is the greatest commandment? With no hesitation, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. The love expressed here echoes that serious attitude and enthusiasm of those Israelites in our Old Testament reading. If you remember, they'd assembled with one accord, they'd listened attentively and wept as they listened. Perhaps it would be a good thing if we did get emotional when we hear Jesus speaking these words. After all, those two commandments are what we, as Christians, use to build and shape our community, our community today. To be reminded of these commandments can be a significant moment for us too. We know we don't always get things right, but we do try. And notice, 
They are commands, not advice, nor suggestions. We may not be in exile as the Israelites had been, but nowadays sometimes we do feel like exiles. Our churches are either shut or only partially open. Our usual services, which meant so much to us, are no more. I'm sure I'm not the only one to shed tears on a Sunday morning for what, for now, we have lost. Instead, we are building new ways to worship. We are stronger. Having to try harder to create worship together is what educationalists call a learning experience which has brought out new skills and strengths. We will try to do it with our hearts, with our souls, with our strengths, with our minds. The second commandment, loving our neighbour, has a new significance nowadays. The virus has taught us that we are reliant on each other. Many people are more aware of the struggle their neighbours are having to keep well fed, to keep from being lonely, to keep cheerful and hopeful. Like the earlier Israelites, we have had our instructions. We have had the law read to us. So now on Bible Sunday, that's just the encouragement we need to travel forward together in company with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We now affirm our faith. And we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for the cycle of life that we see all around us with the changing of seasons. Thank you for autumn beauty as the leaves change colour then gradually fall off and die. Thank you that this death and decay leads to new life in the spring as the nutrients are released to produce new growth. We pray that our experiences of the natural world will teach and sustain us physically, mentally and spiritually. Help us to be responsible stewards in gratitude for all that you have provided. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, we pray for the leaders in our country, for those in politics, the health and social services, education, farming, business, industry and banking. Help them to seek common ground over division as they address the challenges resulting from COVID-19. We particularly pray for the businesses and schools that we know. Be close to leaders as they juggle the need to control infections with the desire to protect the jobs and keep functioning normally. We continue to pray for Jenny and Mark and the rest of the church leadership team at St Augustine's. Thank you for the way this church has carried on its mission to serve our church family and the local community through these challenging times. Give them renewed energy and perseverance through your spirit to lead and inspire us in this period without a vicar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, at this time when we are facing our own worries and uncertainties, help us not to forget the enormous challenges of the poorest in this world. The people of Zimbabwe suffering with famine, for the millions of people in the Middle East forced to leave their homes due to violent conflict, for those in Eastern Europe who will receive shoebox gifts, for those in this country who have lost or are likely to lose jobs due to coronavirus. We thank you for the work of organisations such as Tear Fund, Link to Hope who organised the Shoebox Appeal and FSW. Help us to support them in whatever ways we can following your command to love our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our village, for the young and the elderly, for families and those who feel lonely and isolated. We pray for all those who guide and support them. Give them perseverance to share your love on a day-to-day -day basis. We pray for those who are in particular need, for the sick, the sorrowful and bereaved. Let us spend a few moments praying quietly for any individual or situation that has particularly come into your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for the power of words for good. Help us to look for ways to share your love in the things we say, however small they may seem. Help us to be channels of your love in a world of hurt. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you send upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and make us a people for your own possession. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember now his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And as we look for the coming of his kingdom, we make, with this bread and this cup, the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Holy Spirit and nourish us with the body and blood of Christ, that we may grow into his likeness and become a living temple to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you, in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we pray that you will come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you. Let nothing ever separate us from you. May we live in your love always. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. Let it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths and a strength to our lives. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. thanks to everyone who contributed to this service. Please come to coffee after church by logging on to Blue Jeans. The login details have recently changed. Check the details in the newsletter. If you don't receive a copy of the newsletter but you would like one, then email sash.parishoffice at gmail.com and you can find this address 
on the Contact Us page of St. Augustine's website. And now for our final prayers. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.